Hello everyone and welcome back to Astrobloke. Today's video is going to uh, be the installation of an electronic automatic focuser by, e, uh, by ZWO onto a William Optics Zenith Star 61. If you own any of the Zenith Star uh, range you'll find that the focusers are very similar so the procedure would be the same whether you have a larger one or not. So uh, it's quite a simple fit and I'm just going to go through the procedure you need to do to get this fitted and then I'm going to um, attach the scope to Nina and show you how to set the backlash so let's just put you there for a second over to reveal the bottom of the focuser. I've removed two grub screws that were at either end here and we're going to use these two holes as the mounting points for the bracket that comes with the focuser. But the first thing we need to do is take off the single speed side of the focuser. We leave the dual speed in place. So looking underneath, there's a hole here which gives you access to grub screws that are on the spindle where the knob turns. And there's actually two grub screws. So get one in view, crack it off and just get that loosen. Give it a turn until you see the next one. And again, same again, get in there, loosen it off. And you can see there that the knob is coming off nice and there's the two grub screws that we've loosened to remove and it's actually a thermometer that's built in on that scope. We'll be using that. This is the side we're actually going to fit the automatic focuser so we're going to be attaching it to this spindle here. In the kit you'll get four what I call these uh, flexible adapters, they've got like a bit of a spring load into them and they have one size at one end which fits on the spindle for the motor and then you have a varying hole size on the other end and this you will get to match as closely as possible to the spindle you've got on your scope it's quite a thick spindle there so come for one of the larger ones and the first thing I'm going to do is actually mount this on because I want to put this on in a nice position and I'm going to use the hole at the bottom there to locate the uh, grub screws and I'm just going to give them a little time just to double check there's a little flat side to the spindle I'm going to make sure that's pointing up so that one of the screws is on the flat side and the other one will be on another part of the spindle so we'll just make sure that's doing up we're not going to do anything too tight we tighten everything up at the end so we just turn that until we see the other grub screw there it is, find the wrong way. Okay. And again, like you say, things need to be nice and firmly done up. But we do have some delicate threads and we don't want to strip anything, so don't overdo it. Okay, so that's the flexible adapter in place. The next thing to do is to look at how to mount the plate. We have two threaded holes at the top of the focuser here and this is what allows the focuser to be connected to the plate and there's a slots there so we have a little bit of play for, for adjustment but the plate is going to sit that way round and then the focuser will come on the other side into the flexible adapter and you've got the height adjustment there which is allowing us to get that to be in the right place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the uh, 
bracket first and then I'm going to fit the motor to the bracket. Now the span on this focuser is like it's almost like this, this, this slot that was cut out is just the right size. There's not a lot of play there. So make sure you get one of the nuts that's going to fit in the pack. Make sure you've got a washer on there. Just locate the first one. Don't do it up. And then locate the second one. And once we've caught the threads, making sure that the bracket is nice and square, we can just give those bolts a little nip. Nothing too tight, don't need to go too tight. Feels quite foam. Now taking the motor again we've got a flat side here so we want to make sure that when it's in the grub screw that's here will line up with that flat side which is if we give that a little turn well once the motor's on you won't be able to turn this because the motor will hold everything firmly. What we're going to do now, just going to make sure those grub screws are fully undone so that this motor can push all the way in because it looked like it was just a little bit away from the it was just a little bit away from the mount there so we need to make sure it's all the, there we go and that's now touching flush with the mount so that will hold that so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to locate these screws just to hold the motor in place. Can be a little bit fiddly, as you can see. Okay, I'm just gonna hold that and get the Allen key on there. I think that's gonna help me turn it, because it's a little bit shiny. There we go. Don't do it up, as I say, or you'll find locating the second one really difficult. Once we get the second one located, that's good. We're going to make sure that it's all pretty much square and in position, and then we're just going to knit these up as well. A little tighten there. No tighten there. That looks good. So the next thing to do is to get the grub screws to tighten onto the spindle of the actual electronic focuser. up a bit and we can knit that okay that's good everything's firm we can't turn this more than just a little bit of backlash that's available in the motor there because it's um is fixed and held by the motor so just turn that back over so that's the focuser actually manually fitted onto the scope um, I have noticed online that uh, ZWO have actually released a new version of their electronic automatic focuser and the difference is they've got rid of the 12 volt input here so the USB actually carries enough power to power the focuser so that gives you one less lead running up to your mount which is uh, which is a good thing it uh, helps with the cable management and uh, not having stuff hanging everywhere so um, yeah not bad so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this back on my mount and I'm going to connect to Nina and I'll show you how we set the focus backlash so once you've got the scope back on your mount You've got your power input and you've got your USB input here. So they need to go in and obviously the USB needs to be connected to your PC or to a hub so that you've got control over the focuser. And I'm now going to jump into Nina and show you how this works. So now that everything is connected with the scope, we need to call up Nina and connect the focuser to Nina and then set the backlash. 
So with Nina up, if we go to equipment and then come down to focuser, at the moment it says no focuser, if we press the refresh, it will normally automatically pick up which is there. If not, there'll be a drop down menu and you normally have a ZWO focuser one or number two. This has obviously gone to number one. If I then press connect on that, we've got confirmation that it's connected. The focuser is now connected. And if we press either of these buttons, we should get a movement on the, there, and we've got a good view of that, and we can see that the focuser is actually moving. I've clicked it the other way, and it didn't move, first of all, so we do have some backlash there. So if I come down now to the settings, we'll see that the autofocus step size is 10, and the backlash is set to absolute. Now with the uh, focuser is connected, you cannot change the type of backlash that, uh, you, or system that you're going to have, and we actually want the other type, which is overshoot. So if I now go back to the focuser and disconnect it, and then go into the settings, I can actually change the absolute to, oh sorry, it's not quite, uh, overshoot. There we have it there. And now I can go back to the focuser and reconnect it. Back in the settings, we want to set how much backlash there is. With the auto focus step size, I set this to 20 for finding my backlash. Now you can do it at 10, you can do it at, at, as fine a, as at a finer level as you wish. I find that this, uh, this, this is accurate enough and gives me a good measurement of what the backlash is. So with that set to 20 and I'm on overshoot, what I'm going to do is go back to the focuser and I've got these manual controls here. So if we do the finer controls in the middle, it just moves it by half the step, so I'll be moving it by 10 microns rather than 20, so we can then count that. So what we need to do first of all is move the focuser in one direction. It's saying it's at 4, 270, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 3000, that should move it in, and we're just going to push move and watch it go in. And when it stops, we're now going to measure the backlash to move it back out. So what we're going to do is, on the small one, we're going to press it, and every time we press it, we're going to count 10. So, keep a good eye on the focuser. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, ah, saw it move. Yep, yeah, definitely moved on 12, so. That's 12 times 10, so that's 120. So if we go back to the settings, we can put the backlash in. It doesn't matter whether we call it in or out, of 120. And that is now our backlash. Now, I now normally set my autofocus step to 40. So we do that there. When we're um, actually out in, we've got the stars and we do an autofocus routine, it will give us a focus offset. It will show us the focus of the first one, of the first filter, where it's focused in. If you then do a focus routine for each of your filters, you can actually set a filter offset. And this makes things a lot quicker when imaging. So rather than the camera having to go through a whole refocus uh, sequence, it can literally just jump to the focus that's for that filter. But if I go back to equipment now, and back to the focuser, if I move it in one direction, back in the other direction, and we can see that it's moving in both directions, we can do a fast movement as well, and the focuser is connected and working, and it will just be a case of now just tweaking it uh, with the focus routine to whether the step sizes are correct or not. I know that with this scope, 40 works really well. I find that any less, it's a bit inaccurate and more also. So um, there's a bit of trial and error with that sometimes. Start at 40, 
go up by five, go down by five and see if you get better results and then um, that can be the focus step you've got for your scope. So this is how to fit uh, an electronic automatic focuser from ZWO to a William Optics Zenith Star Scope, in this case a Zenith Star 61, and then how to connect the uh, focuser to Nina and set the backlash. And that's basically it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them. I hope the video has been helpful to you and until next time, I'd love to wish you all clear skies.